you, if you're interested in virtual reality in the self, I think one of the things that's really important is that, you know, we, most people walk around with this idea that, you know, this is, it's naive realism. We think that, well, I see that table, you know, I'm seeing it physically as it is. I'm seeing the physical world as it is. But if you think about it, if I look at you, what's happening? Light's coming down, it's hitting you. Some of it's being absorbed into your skin and some of it's being spit out in all directions. And some of that light hits my eye and goes to the back of the eye and forms an image of you. And so am I seeing you or am I seeing the image of you on the back of my eye? And at that point, most people can realize that I'm not actually seeing you. I'm getting the image on the back of my eye and I have to infer something about you based on what's on the back of my eye. And I have to disentangle that from all sorts of other things like the lights in the room, sounds in the room, everything else, and somehow make inferences about you based on this thing that's proximal, not you distally. And so everything about you is lost. And all I have is a pattern of light on my eyes that I have to reconstruct. And so at that point, most people can realize that this naive realism idea is wrong. And so we live in a virtual world that's constructed, you know, and, it, and it's informed by what's coming in from the outside world, but it's not the physical world. It's an internal representation or an interface. And that's what we're operating on. And there are certain types of people in this world who really get a personal dose of it. If you lose your arm, for instance, you lose your arm and you still feel the phantom. You still feel the limb. And, you know, I've dealt with a lot of patients who are really surprised by this. This was Ramachandran's great insight, was that, well, one of them, is that he, you know, he started to study phantom limb pain. And he started realizing that you can actually play games on, on this internal representation. Because what happens is you lose your limb and you still feel it. You still feel your hand out in space, even though it's gone. And so one of the things that means is that, well, okay, the way we represent ourselves, our bodies, is its own construction. Even though the physical thing is gone, we still have our constructed hand, and that's what we feel. In fact, that's what we've been feeling all along. We've projected this hand into space based on something in us. Right, and so, so the thing is, is you realize that you're living in a virtual world and that what we construct as ourselves, this physical, mental, and emotional body is itself a construction. And of course, if you lose your limb and you still feel something that's no longer there physically, then you can realize this at a really personal level. Um, and, and so what you can do, and this is Ramachandran's great insight, and I've done a lot of research on it, is that you can actually trick the body into thinking that that arm is still there and play with it. And so a lot of people who lose limbs, for instance, in our, you know, they still have this internal virtual representation of the limb that they still feel. So what you do with a simple mirror, I'm gonna go get the mirror. So this is the great notion of Ramachandran's mirror. The idea is that, okay, so an amputee, for instance, has one arm intact, but the other arm is missing. But you can create a simple illusion in virtual reality using a simple mirror. What you do is you, I have my hand here, now, the, imagine my other arm is missing, but if I look into the mirror, all of a sudden, I can see it. There it is. It's actually shown up as a, reflect, a reflection. And so it's as if I'm moving both arms. It's like I'm conducting the orchestra with my intact arm and my missing arm at the same time. And so what happens to some people, some amputees, is the arm gets animated as if never before, the missing arm. So they look down and they see their missing arm moving, and what happens to some people is that all of a sudden this painful limb that's been sitting there, that's been clenching or it's been burning or it won't budge an inch, all of a sudden is liberated because you can see it move. You're telling it to move and it's all of a sudden it's doing what you're telling it to do. And so the phantom moves out of the painful position and for some people the pain is gone forever. And so you know, this is something that people have been researchers, researching for the last 20 years, and I've been fortunate to be involved in it. And, um, and so it's this almost amazing finding that if you put somebody in a virtual environment, it can be as simple as, as a $5 mirror. 
they can liberate themselves from this frozen phantom because all of a sudden, once again, the physical body aligns with this internal virtual body that we've created and you can move it out of the painful position. And the explanation seems to be related to something happening in the brain where we have body maps. We have maps of the hand that actually are on the other side of the brain, on the ipsilateral side in the motion and somatic cortices. And these things literally change when you lose a limb. That real estate that was controlled by the hand is taken over by other parts of the brain. And when you do something like this with the mirror, with, you know, with modern brain imaging, we know that what happens is that the hand basically says, I'm back. And it goes and it takes back over that part of the brain. Um, or it unmasks it, as it were. And so it's a remarkable fact of, of this you know, virtual representation of self that it's actually malleable. It's not set in stone. Um, and it's these sorts of experiments that are not only useful in terms of treating things like pain and, and paralysis from things like stroke, but they're also really interested in understanding that the constructed body and the constructed self are just that, they're constructions. You know, we treat them as if they're just set in stone and real, but there's something illusory about them.